So let us conclude and formalize what we have learned. So given a graph, you get this PG of K, and you can show that there is a unique polynomial where this is, that gives you the number of K colorings of G. So this is some uh, algebraic technicality. PG of K, theoretically speaking, is a function that gives you a number for each K you put in. And uh, for K, being an int a positive integer or zero, this was a polynomial in K. And using algebra, which we'll not go into from that, it follows that this is uh, the a polynomial uh, that when you plug in K, you get PG of K. If this sounds a bit abstract and confusing, never mind. The point is that in general, when you express a polynomial, you want to express the polynomial abstractly as a function of a variable x, a polynomial function, or if you um, are into algebra, as a polynomial expression uh, in a variable x. And you want this variable x to be an abstract variable, not coming from some number of colors or whatnot. And this is all what it says. So this polynomial is called the chromatic polynomial of g, or the color polynomial of g, the chromatic polynomial of g. So for example, for kn, now, this is exactly what we had before. So remember, before I told you that P K N of K is K times K minus one, K minus two, and so on. And now I have just replaced K by X. So it's now a polynomial uh, that is an abstract polynomial. You can deal with it uh, with any algebraic ways you can. And if you do more advanced things, then algebraic tools will help you get graph theoretic insights. So the whole point of this chromatic polynomial is that now to each graph we can attach a polynomial. Polynomials are well-known objects from algebra. So if we ma manipulate them in algebraic ways, this will give us information about the graph and its colorings. This is called the chromatic polynomial. In some books they keep the letter K. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but uh, just to get in the process of thought that you are dealing with an abstract algebraic object, it might help to put the variable as x, because now x is an arbitrary variable, I mean a general variable, and not the number of colors or something concrete. So let's get into some facts about this polynomial PG of x. So, uh, and to, to illustrate how we can use algebra to formulate some of our graph theoretic problems. So this polynomial has a degree. Remember the degree of the polynomial is the highest power of x. Highest power of x. And the highest power of x in this polynomial will be the number of vertices uh, in the graph. So Remember for C4, that had four vertices, this was x to the power four. Why, and the coefficient will be one. Why is that? Well, how did we get the polynomial? We took our graph and we reduced to these null graphs, remember? And in this process, only one of these null graphs will have kept all the vertices. And this is the one where we have deleted at each step's vertices, where no contractions came along the way. And that one will contribute one factor uh, x to the n, one term x to the n, and that is why this is the degree of the polynomial and the coefficient is one. All other null graphs have fewer vertices. Uh, the coefficient of the next um, part of the polynomial is minus the number of edges. So for C4, C4 has four edges, and that's why we get minus four here. The proof of this is an exercise. Also, as was the case in C4, the coefficients alternate in sign. The first is positive, the second is negative, the third is positive, the fourth is negative, and so on. I'll leave the proof as an exercise. The constant term is zero. This is an interesting fact. So if in general, if you have a polynomial f, 
say for example f of x equals x cubed plus 3x minus or plus 7 then f of 0 is 0 times 3 plus 3 times 0 plus 7 which is equal to 7 so the constant term is the value at 0 yeah but what is the value at 0 of pg of k well pg of 0 is the number of colorings of the graph in zero colors and since you have at least one vertex this is impossible so this number must be zero for any graph because you cannot color a graph with zero colors so that's why the constant term is zero more generally you can prove that if the graph has c connected components so maybe it's not connected it has a bunch of connected components then the coefficients of x0, x1, x2 up to x to the power c minus 1 are going to be 0. So these powers will not appear. And the ones with powers xc to xn will be non-zero and alternate in sign. Why is this the case? Well, briefly, in this reduction where you get your null graphs, when you have c components, you're going to stop uh, after c steps well uh, not after c steps but you will gonna stop when you have um c uh, how should i express this better since you have c components in the, there is already no edges between these different c components so you will not have to reduce beyond getting rid of all the edges from these c components that's just the general idea of why these are zero but uh to prove it rigorously, one has to sit down and do the math. But for now, let's content ourselves with knowing that it is true. And also, by noting that if you have a disconnected graph, then the chromatic polynomial of the full graph is the product of the chromatic polynomials of the various components. The reason is that the chromatic polynomial is the number of colorings. And if you have two disconnected pieces if you have two connected components that are not connected to each other then you can color them independently so well, however way you color this one component will have absolutely no effect on however way you co you color this component because there are no edges between them that dictate any relation between the colors so you can color the components independently and by the multiplication principle uh, you get this product which is quite handy because this means that you really only have to care about connected graphs. And uh, once you have calculated the chromatic polynomials of connected graphs, you can get the chromatic polynomials of all graphs.